is another day with the physicians where your health is our business. So they are not going to take some drastic measures. But a 10 year old coming. Pleasure is high. But also to know that not only when your pleasure is high, that you have your COVID. Sugar. And I don't know about any other one, but what you know on the You're welcome back to the Plenty of the Epilepsy is a chronic non-communicable disease of the brain that affects people of all ages. In the olden days, someone that seizes up at random times with white foam at the size of the mouth was considered dangerous and was usually ostracized. About 50 million people worldwide have epilepsy, making it one of the most common neurological diseases globally. Well, I'm sure that our guest expert is going to talk on these and many more on today's program, The Physicians. Welcome to today's episode of your regular TV health talk show, The Physicians, where your health is our business. My name is Dr. Martina Agbiri, and as usual, I'm not alone on this program. I have a co-host by name. Dr. Memona Yusuf Kadiri, you're welcome on board. <laughs> yes, we're going to be talking about epilepsy today. Mm. Have you had an experience before? Not personal, but of course, being in medical school and then being in practice. Um, hence the reason why, um, you know, when people come with behavioral issues, and then by the time we evaluate and find out that this could be more of epilepsy, but manifesting with behavioral issues problems and of course you just know that this is more of a neurological thing as against uh, mental health being in, in mental health space that has given me quite a, a lot to know where do these people really fit in mm. uh, because truly some of those cases can have those behavioral challenges and and when they bring them in like that and you don't get it right it does be managing something different from letting them see the real, okay. real extra. But the, some of the challenges I do encounter um, in some of the cases is the fact that, you know, this person has these symptoms of being having a, an epilepsy okay. and all that, but they will do a, a test and they say yeah, it's normal. normal. And then so some people just want that validation mm -hmm. that there must be a test that will show me that this is this. Mm -hmm. But you no, know, that health education and informing them that, look, Test is okay, but clinical presentation shows okay, that this okay. is what you have. Uh, the, the truth is, uh, I don't think many people know about epilepsy. As it were, yeah, because right? they just think the person has a fainting syndrome, mm. that the person probably just collapses. Some people phone. even think that they're even joking or they're having fun. Yes. Sometimes. And uh, some also think maybe it's contagious, because when they fall and start fitting, with the foam. foam coming people out, people run away. People run. To date. People run. To date. And that's why it's important that we have a guest who is going to help us demystify those myths. Okay. Now, people will say, look, if somebody has epilepsy, if you touch him or her, you also have it. So it's good that I'm particularly have... excited that we've, we actually have a consultant, a neurologist, who is an expert on that field. Yeah. Because sometime in the program, remember we brought somebody who, like an evidence-based person, yes. a caregiver who, who had, had a child, a child has, uh, with, epilepsy. with epilepsy. And we did promise that we're going to bring the expert to talk more. Mm -hmm. Well, today is the day. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, if you're just joining us, don't go away. <laughs> Ensure you just sit tight, hold your bio, and you learn more about epilepsy. We'll be back after this short break.
If you are just joining us, you are on to your program, The Physicians, where your health is our business. Today's episode will be talking more about epilepsy, the causes, the symptoms, the presentation, the risk factors, if any. And of course, we have our guests. It was not easy getting him here, <laughs> but as usual, the physicians, we've always promised that we'll bring the best to you so that you can learn more and hear more from, the, from, from them. So we have today in our midst, Dr. Shea Roberts. He's a consultant physician and a Harvard trained neurologist. He's a CEO of the Royal Cross Medical Center. Dr. Shea, you are welcome to the physicians. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, Ma. sir. You're welcome. <laughs> and thank you for honoring <laughs> us yes. and taking time out of your very, very busy schedule. schedule. To be with us now, today. let's get cracking. Let's, let's get cracking. I know we don't have so many neurologists. I think we're opportunity to have you in our midst here. So let's talk epilepsy. Tell us more about epilepsy. What actually is epilepsy? What is it? What that causes? It's just a, a background. Yes. Epilepsy is a word that actually strikes fear into the minds of people. Um, this is largely due to uh, cultural beliefs, uh, prejudices, and uh, some of it is even scriptural. And uh, for those of you who are uh, of the Christian faith and who read the Bible, you will remember in the Gospel according to Mark uh, chapter 9, beginning from the 17th verse, where a man brought his son to meet Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And uh, the story was that he described what was happening to the child mm -hmm. who was always uh, going into convulsion, yes. foaming in the foaming mouth, the mouth. Uh, oftentimes Almost falling fire. into fire. Yeah. And that, uh, and uh, he said there was some demonic possession. Yeah. And of course, Jesus Christ now removed the demon, exorcised and removed yeah. the demon from him and the child was cured. Now, that sticks in people's mind and it's there culturally people don't look at epilepsy as a physical illness many mm -hmm. people think it's, it's some demonic. kind of demonic possession uh, and, it's, and it's a spiritual attack so it's very difficult for them to even immediately seek orthodox medical care they think because it's likely to be demonic uh they is either they go to some church or to some sorcerer or some uh uh, spiritualists who would uh, exercise uh, the person who is possessed by. Of course, if you've ever seen a convulsion, somebody who has a major fit, it actually looks like someone who is actually possessed. So we can understand where that kind of belief came from. But now we know that epilepsy is a physical illness of the brain. And it is due to abnormal excessive discharge of electrical activity, electrical impulses from the brain, which now Cause through the whole body can lead to different manifestations because it could be limited in what we call a focal epilepsy or it could be generalized in which someone can go into a generalized convulsion, yeah. become unconscious, fall down, bite their tongue, foam in the mouth and be unconscious for several minutes. Or it could be minor or trivial, uh, just a temporary loss of consciousness or impairment of consciousness. If you are talking to somebody and so suddenly they go into sort of arrest, and then you call them and they don't answer. And then after a few seconds, they say, what, what did you say? Yes, that could be an epileptic attack. The other thing is that epilepsy is not one disease, mm. contrary to what people think. Okay. Epilepsy itself is not a disease. Okay. Epilepsy is actually a syndrome. It, 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 there's no... Uh, for example, I can line in front of you now 10 epileptics. And all 10 of them have different diagnoses. In other words, okay. the first one, the epilepsy may be due to a brain tumor. The second one, it could be due to uh, a blood clot in the brain. The third one, it could be due to a stroke. The fourth one, it could be due to injury to the head from a previous head injury. The fifth one, it could be due to something inherited uh, uh, genetically. The sixth one, it could be due to some inflammation of the brain. So, epilepsy is not one disease. It's a collection of diseases which have the same common manifestation mm -hmm. which is having recurrent seizures Seizure. which tend to be chronic mm -hmm. and like you said in your introduction uh, chronicity tells us that it is long lasting it is continuing and very often it lasts for several years or even decades or even for life so it's almost like a permanent illness yes, in many illness. cases even though 
there are several cases that are amenable to intervention and cure. Mm. But we'll probably talk about that later. Does it occur in all ages? Yes, epilepsy occurs in all ages, even right from childhood to adulthood. Uh, of course, uh, uh, many of the seizures young children have tend to be transient, uh, particularly the ones who have convulsions that have to be uh, that are related to fever. Uh, many children actually outgrow this. Uh, anytime they have a fever, they have a convulsion. That is actually not considered to be epilepsy. Uh, we use the term febrile seizure for that because it's a fit that is related to fever. fever. And usually by the time the children grow beyond five years, that tendency is lost. And they, they usually don't uh, develop into uh, permanent uh, epileptics. But you can have epilepsy at any age and it can start at any age. Mm. Of course, the seizures that start in middle life or late life tend to uh, suggest something more sinister as the cause of that epilepsy, particularly in middle aged people or elderly people, brain tumors are things you need to worry about. Or even strokes, when they have strokes that damage the brain. So anything that tends to irritate Irritates. the brain uh. is likely to generate seizures be it structural or even chemical, okay? Anything that irritates, that disturbs the equilibrium of the brain, the brain fires out, it's like it fires out in anger and discharges uh, uh, electricity, like you get high voltage from your uh, transformer in your, in your, on your street. <laughs> and, it, and it blows, it blows <laughs> your fridge, blows everything. That's yeah. what happened in an epileptic okay. seizure. So, so, so you pack full like that. Oh, wow. So, but, so how would we know but we want to know, especially for our viewers, okay, you are saying it's a collection of you know, diseases. diseases. Yes. What could lead to epilepsy, like the causes, and of course also the who are those causes? that are more at risk of developing yes. epilepsy? Yes. The causes of epilepsy varies depending on the age. age. Yeah. In children, it's usually due to either some congenital abnormality in the brain, something that went wrong, uh, during conception or during uh, pregnancy or something that went wrong around the time of delivery. Uh, the time of delivery is actually a very uh, dangerous time for the child and mother. Uh, all sorts of things can go wrong. If the child's brain is deprived of oxygen, either because of prolonged labor, complicated labor, uh, all sorts of issues, part of the brain of that child may become damaged, either partially or even permanently. And this tends to to form scars in the brain, which in later life starts to generate uh, wow. uh, seizures. Infections, of course, in childhood also can lead to seizures and epilepsy. Meningitis, encephalitis, these are things that are common that could uh, ultimately lead to damage uh, of the brain. Of course, as you get into adolescence, again, infections uh, still form a, a large part of things that actually insult the brain, yeah. but then, as we are growing older, injuries to the brain now take uh, a large part of the uh, presentation, head injuries, yeah. either falls, uh, automobile injuries, uh, falling off or, or Okada. Okada <laughs> is actually our thing. greatest <laughs> problem <Yeah>. now. <laughs> because people don't wear crash helmets, helmets. any kind of head injury on Okada. Mm -hmm. You may survive the head injury, mm -hmm. and then you find that several months later or several okay. years later, you become epileptic because you start having seizures. Mm -hmm. And there are also other brain pathologies that lend themselves to seizures. Like I mentioned earlier, brain tumors. You yeah. know, they are notorious in middle age and elderly people. In fact, anybody who's never had a seizure before in middle age who has a seizure for the first time, your first worry is this a brain tumor. tumor. Brain you, tumor. Brain tumor. First worry. Yeah, in a middle age or elderly person, you need to worry about that. Because, well, the thing about it is that, one, it may lend it, itself to cure. Because if the tumor okay. is a benign tumor, all you need to do is get a competent neurosurgeon to go in there and remove oh. the tumor. Of course, it could also be due to a malignant tumor, mm. which may not lend itself to cure. Uh, it may present as epilepsy, but ultimately may take the life uh, of the patient. Okay. Strokes are also a major cause of uh, epilepsy uh, in middle-aged uh, uh, and elderly uh, patients. Wow. Dr. Robert, please just hold it there. Yeah. We'll be back. When we come back, we'll talk more. But you just mentioned stroke. Stroke is, is look it's like so it, common as if it's cut across almost all other medical conditions. Yes. Right. 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 Yeah, real yeah. risk factor. Yes. <laughs> so after this break, we'll come back and we'll discuss, talk more about uh, some of the causative factors 
Don't go away, we'll be back after this short break. Just stay tuned. Yes, of course, I had it. Yes, I do. Yes, I've heard of it. Epilepsy is an issue that uh, someone inherited from a family. Too much of coldness in human's body. From what I heard, they say it's a nervous disease. And my reaction, the moment I saw him, I will know that this man used the epilepsy. I have to dress back for him. Then between five minutes to ten minutes, he will get himself and wake up. I'm suddenly shocked, but I will try my effort by pressing him down because when it falls with the forms in the mouth, we'll be struggling. The best thing to do is to put the person in a safe place. No, it's not contagious at all at all. It can never be contagious except you have been in it. I don't think so. Those people that put smoke, they don't know the meaning of uh, epilepsy. Maybe they can teach maybe it's convoction. Let me just help that because they know they know the person. But if they don't know the person, they cannot go closer and put spoon on his mouth. You use spoon because spoon is a matter that is strong. Because this of this disease called lockjaw. Um and the the mouth is getting closed. Then you put that spoon in the mouth so that the person will not uh, the mouth will not close or bite his tongue. Yes, it's, I'm so excited and happy knowing that you are there listening to what I'm hearing here also. We've been talking about epilepsy with a consultant, neurologist, the one and only Dr. Shea Roberts. <laughs> He's been doing justice to this topic, epilepsy. And Dr. Roberts, you just talked about stroke being one of the causative uh, factors of epilepsy. Do you want to expatiate more? And talk more about the causative factors? Yes, I mean, strokes are quite prevalent in our environment. And uh, the risk factors for stroke, of course, the number one uh, risk factor is hypertension, yeah, yeah. Uh, followed by diabetes, and then there are other several risk factors. But those two form the major risk factors for strokes in our environment, particularly hypertension. And of course, the prevalence of hypertension now in our environment is approaching 50% in adults. That, that, that really is half the population mm -hmm. of adults in Nigeria now are almost certainly hypertensive and because it's a silent disease yes. which has no symptoms <laughs> the first time most people realize they are hypertensive Maybe is when a catastrophe mm -hmm. occurs of like a stroke mm -hmm. of course when you have the stroke uh, if you survive the stroke uh, you are lucky uh, if it doesn't leave you with a major deficit like complete paralysis of one side you are also lucky but then a stroke is a damage to your brain mm -hmm. yeah okay that damage very often will heal but when it heals, it doesn't mm -hmm. heal mm -hmm. properly. Mm -hmm. It leaves a scar. scar. And mm -hmm. once there's a scar in your brain, it's, it's a foreign body. body. It's not supposed to be there. So, can I so the, just... the scar continues to irritate the brain mm -hmm. and continue to generate abnormal electrical impulses, which can then aggregate and become a major yeah. seizure. seizure. And then wow. the patient now starts having seizures and then becomes technically epileptic. Little things can actually aggravate a, a triggered uh, seizure, seizure. Even yeah. flickers of light. Oh, yes. Some people are susceptible to it. The thing about seizures is that we are all born with different thresholds for having seizures. Like I always say, everybody would have a seizure if they irritate your brain enough. Everybody. Uh, temperature is one thing that irritates everybody's brain. And of course, if for some reason your temperature started rising and it gets to something like 104 degrees Fahrenheit or uh, 40 or 41 degrees Celsius, wow. you will have a fit. Even if you have never had a fit before in your life and you are not epi epileptic, a temperature of 40 or 41 degrees is very likely to precipitate a seizure because that high temperature is an irritant to the brain. Mm. So, seizures are likely to occur in any situation in which the brain is insulted or assaulted. You know, whether with a, a smoldering infection or even an acute infection like a brain injury or inf inflammation like meningitis or encephalitis. Mm, okay. So there's so many myths surrounding seizure. And you know, um, this uh, program is watched worldwide. worldwide. And, that, and then of course in our rural communities, we have a lot of people, like if a child is having a fit, 
put the leg on fire, mm -hmm. or if the child is having a fit, or an adult puts put spoon in the his mouth, mouth yeah. or the person is having a fit with saliva, don't touch. What are those other common yes. myths we need? We need to demystify this so yes. that they can listen and as they are watching, they take home some of these lessons. Thank you very much. Now, like I said, uh, our understanding of epilepsy is all colored by <laughs> our traditional <laughs> beliefs, our God. prejudices, and uh, wherever we come from. So, for example, the belief that the saliva of an epileptic is infectious <laughs> it's, it's a fallacy you know and again that actually causes problem for epileptics but nobody wants to help them for yeah, fear yeah. that if they come near mm -hmm. an epileptic they, they would also become epileptic no epilepsy is a non-communicable disease. disease and i'm sure in your intro that yes. is what you said you cannot catch epilepsy from someone who's <laughs> epileptic so please if you ever see somebody having a fit in any way you can help please lend your hand you cannot catch epilepsy that's yes. number one putting a spoon mm. of uh, a or, any, or your finger, a finger in anybody's <laughs> mouth because they're having a seizure is also based on a fallacy. There's a belief that if the person having uh, an epileptic fit clench, uh, clenches his or her mm. teeth together, they will die. Okay. It's a lie. Mm -hmm. They are not going to die. The epilepsy, epileptic fit rarely kills anybody. Most fits last two to three minutes. It's burnt out. The patient goes into a sleep and then wakes up and that's the end of that fit so the rationale for putting something in people's mouth is based on a fallacy mm. and it actually can cause serious damage mm. not to talk about broken teeth yeah. uh, things falling into the airway mm. of the patient mm. and i've actually seen a young lady killed in quote once because she was having a fit in a boarding house mm. and the friends tried to put something in her mouth and they took oh, one of then. one shoe like one of these your lovely shoes with a high heel stuck it no, no, down no, no, no. her oh, mouth no. and she beat it off no she it blocked her away oh. by the time they brought her to accident and emergency in Luz, in, Araba, in those days i was just a junior resident she was dead she had asphyxiated because whatever oh. they put in her mouth blocked her. Blocked. Mm. so do not put anything in the mouth of anybody having an epileptic fit it does not help. It's not going to prevent them from dying. They are not going to die anyway. Certainly do not put salt. Mm -hmm. Don't put oil. And don't mm -hmm. give them cow's mm -hmm. urine. Yeah, or use kerosene. Like or, or use cow's <laughs> urine. All yeah. those things don't work. But mm -hmm. these are traditional remedies that our, our folks back home and in the villages believe in. But they are based on total fallacies. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so what's the, before we round off, what's yeah. the basic way of managing someone who has it? Yes. Okay. Epilepsy in its various forms can be treated. Uh, it's like you said, it's a chronic condition and very often requires chronic management, management. meaning the patient has to be on medication. Mm -hmm. We call these drugs anticonvulsants, and the patient usually would need to take these drugs every day, oftentimes several times a day, to control the seizures. Most patients who take these drugs religiously have their seizures controlled and they can have their lives back. In other words, they can have some restoration to normalcy. In itself, it's not a cure, but at least it's controlling it. Mm. Some cases can actually be cured with medication, provided they are treated long enough and they are seizure-free over a, a period of time. We can then give them a trial yeah. of withdrawal of drug and the patients uh, get cured. Some people uh, uh, require surgical intervention mm. to remove a structural pathology in the brain that is causing seizures seizure. and leading to epilepsy. Uh, if your case is in that category, you will be referred to the appropriate neurosurgeon yeah. or center that will deal with that and remove it. Wow. Thank you very much, <laughs> Dr. Shiro, but it's actually it's been nice pleasure. having you here. Yes. And uh, I'm sure when we call on you again mm -hmm. to handle some of, the, of these topics, <laughs> yeah. you at least do justice again. Yeah. Them. So do not begin to ostracize people. Do not cast them out from <laughs> your environment. Allow mm -hmm. them, give them the space. They are human also. Thank you so much, Dr. Roberts. And uh, Dr. Mimuna. Thank you very much, um, sir, for this you know, awakening information that you've just shared with our viewers. Please understand that epilepsy is a non-communicable disease. So you are not going to catch it just by helping somebody out there. So please, till next time, I remain Dr. Memuna Yusuf Kadri. And I'm Dr. Martina Agbemye. Remember to follow us on our social media handles, on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, and of course on YouTube. If you want to be part of this program, yeah, just is, don't throw it away. Just click that button. Send us an email. And of course, we'll respond as usual.
Till next time, stay blessed. I am Dr. Akbo Jeme Afiemo. I'm a consultant pediatrician and I work in the respiratory allergy unit of the pediatric department in Lassus. Keep watching the physicians. This walk three to four times a week. And you can do it for 45 minutes. And for those that are able to count their steps, at least a day, if you're able to do 10,000 steps, that's what is recommended. It's good.